Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. And I want to say in a very particular way, if this happens to be your very first time to be listening to the broadcast, I want to say a special welcome to you. Right now, my Bible is open to the first epistle of John, 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Today and tomorrow, we'll complete our look at a key set of verses here. If you can right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. We're at a rather famous verse, 1 John chapter 1 and verse Verse 9. Along with getting your Bible, get also something on which you can jot some notes. I've got three points from verse 9 to give to you. But also, along with taking notes, you'll have that pen and paper ready to jot down contact information. I have a free gift to give to you, and that free gift is a sample packet containing one each of all of our gospel tracts. You see, Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of the larger ministry, Bible Tract Echoes, as the announcer said. And really, my goal is that you get gospel tracts and use them to extend the, the ministry of the Word of God and the gospel of Christ to more and more people, to see people come to Christ. I'm going to say more about that here in just a moment. But right now, I want to lead into the Bible study time this way. There is a phrase often used these days, and the phrase says this, there is an elephant in the room. There's an elephant in the room. Now, this phrase has nothing at all to do with real elephants, and I think you already know that. It's a phrase that simply means that there's a large and very important issue that exists right now. It's an issue that is dominating things. Let me give you a for instance. If a teenage boy were to get arrested for robbing a store and his mother goes to the jail to visit him, what would they talk about? Well, hopefully they're going to talk about the robbery and she's going to want to know why in the world the boy did it. If they talk about everything else but the robbery, then we would say that there is an elephant in the room. The elephant is the fact the boy got arrested. Now, when we come here to 1 John chapter 1, there's a kind of elephant in the room. Every believer knows 1 John 1, 9. That's the famous verse about confessing our sin and gaining God's forgiveness. Most believers use this verse as a centerpiece of the chapter. They think that th this verse is the key verse in the chapter, but it is not. Now, we all use verse 9 a lot, and that's because we need it a lot. But verse 9 is not the main point of 1 John chapter 1. Get your Bible and let me just show you how it fits in. Before we go any farther, I mentioned those gospel tracts a moment ago. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We have about 40 gospel tracts in a sample packet to send you. One of them is this one in my hand. It's our smallest gospel tract. It's the size of a credit card, and that's by design because this gospel tract is entitled Charge It with a question mark. The front face of it is designed to look like a credit card. On the back side, we have some clear, simple Bible verse statements which describe this. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. All have sinned, but there is one named Jesus Christ who went to Calvary and he took our sin debt onto himself and he paid our sin debt and he gave to us instead his righteousness and for you and I to be in a right relationship to God, for you and I to be saved from our sin, we must receive Christ as Savior. 
Trust me, this simple, short, little gospel track has the gospel on it, and it's very handy to use as a tip when you're out in a restaurant. I use it when I'm going to get gas at the gas station. I put my credit card in. I pull my credit card out. I begin to pump gas, and I put this card into the slot so that the next person has to pull it out to be able to slide their credit card in, and by so doing, I have just put the gospel into their hands. Just one of the tracks. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information, or you can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. And remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. I have one verse to read for you right now. The verse is verse 9 of 1 John 1. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I hope you have memorized that verse. Now, this verse is the best known verse in all of chapter 1 of 1 John, and probably it's the most familiar verse in the whole book of 1 John to most believers. It is all of 1 John that some folk actually know about. And and if you're going to know one verse from the book, this is a pretty good verse to know. But verse 9 is a tool. It's not the main point of the chapter. It's a tool. Let me use an illustration. If you were to wreck your car and you take it to the body shop and they repair it, they make it look like new again, don't they? When you go to pick up the car, what you don't do, you don't go ask to go in and admire the tools that the man used to fix your car. You go in and you admire the car, right? Well, here in 1 John 1, the car, so to speak, is you and I being in fellowship with a holy God. When that fellowship with God is right, it is a gorgeous thing to behold. When our fellowship is wrecked, it needs to get fixed so that the finished product, the fixed product, can once more be admired. When a believer sins, and we will, our sin damages our fellowship with a perfectly holy God. It needs to be repaired. Our fellowship needs to be repaired. Confessing our sins, as verse 9 says, is a tool, is the tool to fix the damaged relationship. Verse 9 finishes the thoughts that were begun back really in verses 7 and 8. You see, in verse 8, there a believer is saying that they have no sin. They are saying that because at the end of verse 7, we're told that the blood of Jesus continually cleanses us from our sin. And the person thinks, well, if the blood of Jesus continually cleanses me from my sin, therefore, I really don't need to confront and confess my ongoing sins that I've committed. Well, that person according to verse 8, is a deceived believer. When a believer sins, they do not lose their salvation. They don't stop being a born-again child of God, but their relationship with God is damaged. And verse 9 is the tool to fix the damage. Verse 9 makes three very important points, and each point is going to begin with a word beginning with the letter C, like in the word cat, and a second word beginning with the letter P, like in the word puppy. By so doing, I make all the cat people happy and all the dog people happy. Here we go. Point number one is this, confession practice. There's the two words, confession practice. Verse 9 says, if we confess our sins. Now, the Greek words that are used here, the verbs, speak of an ongoing practice of confession. Because every believer who is practicing walking in holiness, walking in the light with their holy God, that person will see their sins and they're going to confess them. Confession will be the natural response of a believer to their sins when they're walking in the light. So, Point number one is confession practiced. But that brings us to number two, which is commitment promised. Commitment promised. Verse nine says again, he, that is God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here a promise is made to believers. God puts his reputation, so to speak, on the line. 
When you and I sin and then confess it, God will forgive us. God will cleanse us. God will remove any barriers to being in fellowship with him. Now remember, that's the whole point of the chapter. Starting back in verse 3 of chapter 1, we find these words, and I'm quoting now. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, this chapter is about being in fellowship with God and with fellow believers. But then verse 5 tells us that this fellowship has its foundation not in God's love and mercy, but in his holiness, in his perfect being in lightness. My friend, God started loving sinners before the foundation of the world. The fact that God loved us and so on, that was not the hindrance to us being in fellowship with God. The hindrance to us being in fellowship with God was the fact that God is perfectly holy and we are perfectly sinful. But God solved this dilemma by sending his son, Jesus. Jesus died. Jesus shed his blood. Jesus provided a punishment payment suitable to deal with our unholiness, all of our unholiness. Our sin that we commit after being saved is also cleansed by that one-time blood payment. But, and here's the third point that's made here. The third point is this, concrete principles, concrete principles. Verse 9 says, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us. God made a way to save us from our sin. Christ's death was the just payment for our sin. But now, as God's children, God continues to forgive on the principles of his faithfulness that he makes, that he commits himself to us as his children, and he based upon his justice. Notice here, it is not our sin that is forgiven here. It is the sinner that is forgiven. Sometimes people miss that. God forgives you and I, but God deals with our sins. Our sins are a blight on our relationship with God. Our sins are cleansed away from us. Well, let me go back to my wrecked car illustration. The car had to be repaired. The car had to be made new again. How did that happen? Well, all the damaged metal was removed and it was all replaced. That's how it got fixed. Friend, when God forgives, he removes all the wreckage of our sin. He takes it all away, and our relationship with God is made brand new again to the glory of God. You see, if you're listening today without Jesus as your Savior, you may spend a whole lot of time confessing your sin, and I think that's a good thing to do, but you have no relationship with God upon which he has to forgive you because you have not come with a surrendered, repentant heart and say, Father in heaven, I don't just need today's sins dealt with. I'm a sinner from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I need a new life. I need to be born again. I need everlasting life. I give you my life. Just take my sin away. Make Jesus my Savior. Wash me through the blood of Christ and give me the gift of eternal life. If you've never done that, do that right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks. P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.